Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom, meaning peace, may that be unto the elect unto, of the nation of Israel. Salachia. And may that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Please forgive me for slipping there. Okay, so I want to do a quick hit on, on Syrac or Ecclesiastes 3. We have a few verses here. Yeah, and just to. Just to go into it, you know, not going to this book and that book, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, too heavy. Yeah, just a, a simple read through of a, a short excerpt. Without further ado, from verse 1 Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Okay, verse 2 For the Lord Yahweh Shem Shai hath given the father honor over the children, and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Now, of course, you know, once you, like, similarly with Yahweh Shai, yeah, when he was, in fact, you know, me saying, I'm not going to hop about. Let me hop about. All right, Luke. Um, Luke 2 and 42. And when he, and in, when he was 12 years old, who, Yahweh Shai, they went up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, after the custom of the feast. And when, they've, um, and when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Yahweh Shai tarried behind in Jerusalem, and, and Yahweh Sat and Joseph and his father knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. You know, so he's going you know, around the cousins and so on and so forth. That doesn't say cousins, you know, kinsfolk just means family. And you know, Jake, families, you know, we have big families, tend to have big families. And so he's going around, you know, seeking. Seeking to find him. Verse 45. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. When the doctors isn't you know, medical professionals, it's talking about when you go into the word doctor, that's where you get the term doctrine. Okay, so it's talking about the teachers. A true, a true doctor you know, is a teacher who authorizes or you know gives out... Um, what do they say? Um, prescribes doctrine, you know, prescribes teachings. That's the true doctor. Right, so he's listening to them, so they might tell, tell him something. So he's hearing them, and then he's asking questions. And verse 47, And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Sorry, and answers. Yeah, so they were, they were looking. Yeah, this is 12-year-old, so he's a man. You know, he is, he's coming of age. You know, but at the same time, he's a very young, very young man. So they're astonished. Even, I'm sure they would even be astonished at, at, at that level of understanding from a man. You know, and when I say a man, I mean a man of you know, twenty and upward. You know, when you when you when we're perceived in this yeah you know, in this world to be men. And I'm not adding to it. I'm, that's just me speaking as a man. I would presume, yeah, you because know, he was he was of a very high level understanding, even at the age of twelve. Okay, verse 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee with sor sorrowing. So that's you know, a point to make. And just bank that for another video. If you ever get into, a you know, Christian comes up to you and says this. Now Mary, the mother of Yahushai, referred to Joseph, Yahushai, the father of Yahushai, as his father. His earthly father. Okay. So the context is there. Verse 49. And he said unto him, How is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the same which he spake unto them. Because yeah, they're looking at Ed Joseph's business. What are you talking about? He was talking about his heavenly father. You know, but that was showing. Although he was. Um, that, although that is his parents. You know, he was of the age. You know, to, to go. You can't say he sinned. Did he sin? To do that, you know. So anyway, verse. So read verse two again. For the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, hath given the Father authority over the children. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hath, which he has. Yeah, but that was a slipping speech. For the Lord hath given the Father honor over the children, and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honoreth his father, make an atonement for his sins. Okay, now that's that's something to bear in mind. 
You know, whoso honor his father maketh and maketh an atonement for his sins. And if you break that word up, it literally is at one ment. So to atone is to bring something at one, you know, to reconcile. Okay. It says, and he that honoureth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. Now, of course, that's not an earthly carnal treasure, that's a treasure in heaven. You know, that, and especially in our culture, in our Israelite culture, the honouring of the parents is very, very important. You know, even you can see that, pursuant to uh, Romans 2 and 14, it's in the spirit of, of Jake for the most part. Now, of course, there's prophecy that talks about in the last days people have come disobedient to parents and so on and so forth. But, you know, there's comedic sketches <coughs> of um, this guy, I can't remember his name, I don't even know if I ever, I don't think I ever knew it, um, talking about, you know, black kids are just as shocked as white kids when uh, we don't sp speak back to our mothers or parents as when they do speak back to their parents. You know, I was chilling with my white friend and we were just playing, and my mom kicked down my door and said, Motherfucker, you better clean this goddamn room before you get off that dick game. Didn't it? And then he said, Oh, man, dude, that's your space. She can't say that. You know, do you want me to say something? And then he, he said, <laughs> the brother said, you know, he, he had me talking like one of the slaves from Roots. You was going to get me in trouble. You know, and that's, that's the contrast there, you know, showing that, that it's in Jake's spirit and not to rebel. You know, because you get a fucking whooping for starters. But also it's in his spirit, you know, not to not to hype up to that degree. You know, but again, there's a balance to that, a wicked balance, true say. Because there's also the prophecy about being disobedient to parents, so on and so forth. But anyway, I'll keep pushing in this. Verse five. Whoso honoureth his father shall have joy of his own children. And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. That's a way, and when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. Yeah, that reminds me of the scripture because it's a law. Is it not a law? Let's prove it. Exodus 20, which is um, the so-called Ten Commandments, which are many more than that. Yeah, but there's there's a this is a chapter that people go to call it the Ten. The Ten. And it's not the Ten. Yeah, it is a Ten. Yeah, but it's not all of them. You understand? Um, there it is Exodus 20 and 12. It says, Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy power giveth thee. So it's a law to honour your father and your mother. Um, that was it. Turn here. This is a, the book of Proverbs. Sorry. The book of Proverbs 28 and 9. It says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Let's look that word up. Abomination there. So if you turn your ear away from hearing the law, and that goes for all of them. And of course, we you know, we always clarify, we're not able to keep every single law in this wicked flesh. You know, but if you're turning your ear from it, you don't want to hear about it. That's a different thing. Now we are rehearsing the righteous acts, as it says. This word uh, abomination is th thawibia. Sorry, thawiba, thawiba. Right, the why but a disgusting thing. Your prayer shall be a disgusting thing. If you turn your ear away from hearing the law. Abomination, abomin abominable. In ritual sense of unclean food, idols, mixed marriages. Now mixed marriages, you read Deuteronomy 7 and verse 3. But uh, contextualize that by verse 1. It's talking about seven Canaanite nations. Yeah, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Hivites. In fact, let me not... Let me not... Um, Deuteronomy 7. Yeah, so that was talking about the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Just so we're, you know, aware of that. Now let's go back here. So you know your prayer will become a disgusting thing if you turn your ear away from hearing the law. That's a heavy, heavy a thing to bear in mind, man. Okay. Verse 6. He that honoureth his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient unto the Lord, Yahweh, shall be a comfort to his mother. 7. He that feareth the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, will honour his father, and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. And so you, you treat... Yeah, the way is there, man. 
just just as you as soon as your um what do you call it manager or boss that's what I was looking for boss or in, in, uh, employer says right go and do this you know, you're quick to do it you can't be slack you know, when your father your mother says oh darling will you please do this you know because they'll probably talk or even if they don't man yeah, but they're, they're, of, co- of course they're going to be inclined to you yeah they love you man whether they show it in this way or that they still like tough love yeah, they still love you like it talks about um, in Hebrews about chastening um, let me say but they're, they're probably what I'm saying is that the boss is going to say yeah, I'm generalising of course yeah, I don't know your boss I don't know your parents and everything but they're, they're, they're going to tend to be you know, less they're not going to love you like your parents right? that's not presuming shit Hebrews 12 and 9 it says furthermore we have had fathers of our flesh which have corrected corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and live so this is talking about yeah, the chastening in verse 11 yeah, like we give reverence to our fathers now in the moment and when you were getting a whooping or when you were getting a verbal chastisement did that feel excellent like oh I can't, uh, yeah especially when you're younger a man or a woman you know boy or girl no, but verse 11 says that now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby and so in plain English it don't feel good when you're getting rebuked chastened but afterwards you begin to see the benefit I'm not saying I can speak better than the scriptures but I'm saying in the King James it can be a bit difficult to understand So verse 7, He that feareth the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, will honour his father, and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Honour thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that blessing may come upon thee from them. Verse 9, For the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. Right, so the Lord can have certain things happen in your life. Of course, you know we know this. But it's, it's, to, it's to bring it to the, the forefront again and, rem, and remind ourselves, remind. It's in our mind, but we'll remind. Now, the Lord can have certain things happen based on how you behave, especially to your parents, man. Okay? Even if, you know, they, they're um, booking up against certain aspects of the truth and such, you still have to have patience. Verse 10. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father, for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. Right, so if if you know, if you if you if your pops went off, and some you know, judge he he, he was judged, you know, of course you, you you don't cuss out the heavenly father. You don't get mad or anything like that, but you don't you don't glory in it. To or the, the in the dishonor. You know, if he's been cast down to a low state. I mean, that's that's not joy. That shouldn't be joyous unto you. And of course, you understand. You take perspective and everything like that. You know, it's it's not a glory to you. Verse eleven: For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father, and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. Verse twelve: My son, help thy father in his age, and grieve him not as long as he liveth. So in his age. It's talking about, you know, when he's up in age. And grieve him not as long as he liveth. Then you don't bring him problems, man. Do you not think you, you, you gave him enough problems yeah, when you were young? And this this is even, you know, if he wasn't around, everything like that. Bearing all of it in mind. Because yeah, I'm speaking from at my experience. Because that's all I've experienced. Yeah, but I'm aware of the brothers, sisters, so on. Have different experiences. But all the scriptures apply to us all. Yeah, the scriptures apply to us all, but you've got to understand um, how to uh, the the application of the understanding, the wisdom to your specific situation. Where right, verse thirteen, and if his understanding fail, have patience with him, and despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. Yeah, so when you, when you were down and low, you might, you you might not feel like you were able to know it, 
Yeah, you don't don't flex on you on you pops, man. Yeah, when you're when you're up, yeah, we've all been down. We've all been up. Okay, but despise him not when they are in thy full strength. It says, "For the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten, and instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up." Okay, to edify, because that's what it means. An edifice is a building, so to build thee up, to edify. Verse 15, in the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. Okay, it shall be remembered by who? The Heavenly Father. In the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. Thy sins also shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm wind, in the fair warm weather. Slach you, the slip of tongue. Verse 16, he that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer, and he that angereth his mother is cursed of the Most High. My son, go on with thy business in meekness, so shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favour before the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. You know, and I'll conclude it there. I pray it was edifying. On to the next video, Lord willing. All praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Racha Kodash. Shalom.